there, my name is Phil Baker, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And I, I missed this video when it came out, this uh, the Comic-Con panel uh, um, talking about Doctor Who. I saw, the, I saw one, and it was so boring. Oh my god, my brain was going to explode, talking about Time Lord Victorious. Uh, and it was just, it was just, I mean, in general, everything I saw from Comic-Con was pretty darn dull. I don't think they really know what they were doing with the... Uh, yeah, you know, the whole like they weren't even live streaming anything, and they turned off comments. It, it just, it, it, they, I don't think they understood uh, YouTube or you know, yeah, yeah, how, how it works. So that's why I think it was a bit of a uh, a down script. But they had this uh, this Comic Con panel um, talking about about who was the best Doctor, and they, but there's a bunch of stuff in there that was just oh my god, utterly disastrous for the current production team of Doctor Who, and I think it really shows clearly. Uh, um, not just how, how they fail, but also how uh, journalists in general have failed and how incredibly out of step with, uh, with the audience they are uh, in just about every way. Yeah, it's, it's kind of incredible. So listen, I'm going to give you a, you know, a quick preface to this, this video. Uh, I am not going to be speaking uh, uh, warmly or positively about uh, Chris Chibnall or Jodie Whittaker. I, I really don't like their take on Doctor Who. Um, I, I, if you like it, that's really good. I'm happy that you like it, you know? Listen, I think the uh, uh, the worst story hitherto, um, uh, jo uh, Jodie Whittaker appearing, was uh, Colin Baker's, uh, I don't know, either Time Lash or... Uh, uh, what's the other one I was watching? Uh, Terror of the Vervoids, especially the, the the version they have of the Blu-ray, which uh, uh, like takes out all the troll scenes. So it's like it made it even worse. That's incredible. Now listen, that doesn't mean I hate Colin Baker or anybody who likes it. I'm like, well, okay, we have a di different opinion, and that's really all. There's a real genuine feeling, and I think just sheer terror. Uh, that that anybody voices reasonable uh, criticism <laughs> about this current era uh, because I don't know I don't think it's doing very well honestly I don't think it's doing very well. so listen look if you're a fan of this current era God bless you love you if you want to come on my channel and uh, and talk about it with me I won't listen I won't take the piss out of you I I actually would like a conversation I think that'd be really quite nice and helpful anyway so before we get in the video can I ask you guys can you hit that subscribe button thank you very much that'll be very very helpful uh, I am extremely uh, uh, extremely grateful. Uh, anybody subscribing, of course, can, can enter my competitions. Uh, the prize this week is the Indiana Jones box set. This doesn't have Kingdom of Crystal Skull because it came out before that. It's got Raiders, uh, Tomb, uh, Temple of Doom, uh, Last Crusade, and an awesome uh, uh, DVD, uh, uh, bonus DVD disc of, of, of extras telling you everything you need to know or whatever you want to know about the making of uh, Indiana Jones. All you need to do to win it is subscribe to the channel. Subscribe and in the comments leave the hashtag of Dr. Jones. Dr. Jones, and we're doing the prize draw on August 2nd, which is... Uh Sunday, I think, Sunday, and I'm going to be on the TARDIS zone, and we're doing a watch-along of the Idiot's Lantern, or if, we, if it's on Saturday, then it's going to be a watch-along of Panafire, look at that, whoa, there's those, those ancient synapses started firing, you can, you can actually see Boom, Boom is trying to think, like, oh! So anyway, so there we go. So yeah, please subscribe. Thank you very much. Also, go check check the video notes. So even if you haven't subscribed, you can download a a uh, uh, what is this? Uh, Sapphire and Steel audio. Sapphire and Steel uh, created well, originally created by PJ Hamill on TV. This is the audio version by Big Finish, which is out of license, out of print. You cannot buy it. You can't get digital. You can't get physical. Uh, so go ahead and download it. I will say a Big Finish ever gets a license back, which they're not going to do with it. Big Finish is a great company, by the way. If you don't know them, great, great content. Go to the website, bigfinish.com. Pick yourself up a bargain. they got a bunch of stuff that's like $2.99. Anyway, if they ever get the license back, then go ahead and buy yourself a digital copy. Fine. So let's, we're going to look at this Comic-Con footage. We're not looking at the whole thing. It's 40 minutes, but there's... Uh, um, there's a couple of really telling parts. And I'm not, I'm not cherry-picking it. I'm just saying that there's two distinct segments that, that really tells you everything you know, that, 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 that you, you you could possibly want to know. So yeah, I don't think it's uh, it's it's been in lost on anyone that Jodie Whittaker and Chris Chibnall will not go out in public and engage with fans unless they've been very vetted. You know, like they will go on TV when you have like one fan who who like who likes his era and they'll push them forward with a broom, you know, get rid of whatever. They they will interact with with vetted fans. When I was a kid, I I think this is probably what what made me fall in love with Doctor Who. But I think I was really in love beforehand. Uh, I remember going to see uh, Tom Baker 
uh, at my local uh, uh, local kids' bookstore, and it was glorious. He was in full costume, and then just kid after kid, after, like going around the building, like, uh, and it was even one. He took his hat off, he put it on me. <laughs> he was just. Doctor Who in front of me and my head exploded. So like the, uh, Jodie Whittaker can't can't do that because if she goes out to a Comic Con panel, they're gonna she's gonna be asked uh, tricky uh, tricky uh, and Christian they're gonna ask uh, difficult uh, uh, yeah difficult questions. What type of difficult questions? Go, go, if you haven't seen it, go and look on YouTube for Chris Chibnall when he was like 13 or so uh, going on a uh, open air, which is a, uh, a a show where you could like talk to the creators or the programs and you can have, you can have a bit of a moment with them. And, and he was asking John Nathan Turner, the producer at the time, pretty difficult questions. I think we could ask for, I think it'd be much more brutal today if we spoke, if, if Chris Chib Chibnall again went out, you know, unvetted, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, yeah, unrestrained. So, uh, uh, um, so yeah, so that's. This really answers the question because this has a uh, uh, a journalist, a, a a particularly you know sweaty, scummy uh, access journalist. Well, listen, I don't know. He certainly seems very sweaty and scummy access journalist. Like he's very proud of having all his uh, celebrity in in interviews, uh, and he toes the party line completely. That uh, um, well, yeah, we'll 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 we'll, we'll, we'll hear, hear what he has to say in a second. But what's much more interesting is they have a panel of fans there. And I first saw the fans, I'm like, oh, they're all going to be like, you know, you know, totally on board for jo Jody. They're going to love the era. Ah, uh -huh! it was. I tell you, it was an absolute disaster. Let me turn the sound up, and I, you know, I'll be stopping through this. So you can have my sparkling commentary. You know, this, that, that's I'm sure why you come here. So let's I get it sound a little bit more. And we'll press play. Okay, that that's the entirety of the pro professionalism I saw for Comic Con. <laughs> that that introduction. Alfred to the gas lamp district. It's a debate which has raged through space and time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to just check this guy out. Was it Sandro uh, Monetti? Just go check out. He he is so into his access. He's so into his Hollywood access. It's really kind of sad. Um, and he will not say anything that would uh, uh, disrupt his access. You know, like you know, I get the feeling that his whole his whole background there has been carefully. You know, uh, curated to to give a you know give a an impression. This is just how I live. You know, this is this is my everyday life. Like no ironic. That's just our everyday lives. You know. So uh, yeah, let's see. I mean, I don't know. I think he kind of likes Doctor Who, but I think he um, uh, he likes the current Doctor Who because she's a lady. Yeah, you know, it, like it's it's the weirdest thing. But yeah, I think that's that's what he really enjoys. So let's hear more of this. Right? Who's the best Doctor Who? It's a question we're going to answer on this panel. Present that's his podcast, Who's the Best? So he's plugging it heavily. My God, again, look at that sweaty little nervous face, that little pudding. Oh, dear. By San Diego Hukon. I'm your moderator, CNN contributor Sandro Manetti. And okay, being a CNN contributor, that's not good anymore. Being a CNN contributor, that makes you a bit of a laughing stock. You should keep that to yourself. Uh, okay, so I, I say, I initially saw these fans. I'm like, well, these are kind of typical fans in that they're like, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, it looks like these are, we have to band together to find love because no one else is going to love them. But yeah, I, 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 I think I would fit, fit in with this group. But, uh, you know, so I'm expecting at least, at least the one at the bottom to be a Jodie fan, right? I'm expecting, you know, at least, you know, at least her to like it. Uh, have you ever seen this? You're going to be amazed. Let's, let's, let's hear the first question. With me to discuss and debate the great Time Lords is a panel of expert and opinionated Whovians. Let's meet them now. River Alexandra Song. Julie O'Malley. By the way, her cosplay of River Song is pretty darn good, I have to say. I, I'm, I'm quite impressed. With that. Not as good as the Colin Baker cosplay. I'll tell you, that takes real commitment. You know, I'm going to cosplay as Colin. Uh, and also, listen. Yeah, I don't think it was. It's got. It, it was unnoticed. Like, okay, Doctor Who. I think is a show that works best and always has worked best when you aimed it at like twelve-year-old boys. When you make it for twelve-year-old boys, that means you're going to get a fair amount of women as well. So I always found, like, in fandom prior to the current era, it was about seventy percent male to thirty percent female. 
maybe going back about 80 20 right uh but it's it was still certainly during the year you know, the hiatus years the new adventures the virgin books it it, it started becoming more you uh, more female you know but and I think, you know, when Russell D. Davis brought it back, he really, especially when David Tennant and Matt Smith came, we had a strong 50-50 female, uh, uh, you know, female fandom, which I think is probably, probably where we are now. So, yeah, again, we have five people, one of them a guy. I don't think that's so representative. You know, I don't think that's so representative. I think we'll be more rep I mean, you got the moderator, but, like, you can't call him a fan. I mean, maybe, I don't know, if you had six people there and three of them were guys, three women... Bit more, but like I don't know, four like four female fans and one male. I, it feels like they're trying to uh, uh, make a point, and and a point. The point is that you know, kind of like Kathleen Kennedy said, the force is female. Yeah, it's not. It's just that I don't mind women coming. And, like, and you know, I have to tell you, some some of the uh, uh, the best, some of the best Doctor Who has been uh, has certainly been female. If you have, if you if you you probably don't remember her if you came in in like yeah two thousand five onwards. Go and look out. Kate, look for Kate Allman. Kate Allman, fan freaking tastic writer. This a wonderful author. Every book she wrote in the Doctor Who range is, is brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, and just really understand. And also, if you can find a Blake Seven fiction as well, it's also really, really good. So yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I, there's just so many you know, examples I could give. But uh, uh, yeah, so uh, anyway, so I feel like they're making a point. I just don't think it's a very genuine point. Christy Schumann. Karen Glover. John Dyer V. Now, you'd think... Now, you have to tell you, that, that again, the Colin costume, her print, she put a lot of, like, love and heart into that, bless her. Yeah, so I'm just looking at the background, seeing if he's got the season 14 Blu-ray yet. No, he hasn't. <laughs> I'll, go, I'll tell you. Uh, by the way, this was mentioned on uh, a, uh, I think, Nerdronic, when it was with Hills, uh, Hills versus Babyface. I remember when that stream came on, I, saw, I, I was on a live stream. I went, oh, I really want to watch it. But I was, I was live streaming. So what can you do? Uh, anyway, we're getting to the, the point of this first question in a minute. And it's a freaking disaster. I think that we would be discussing the 13 established TV Doctors, but as the most recently aired episode season finale the timeless children showed us turns out look i mean really are you trying to tell me it's not agenda driven look at united colors of better than really ah, i mean it was even written in the script that the the girl uh, regenerates into a be beautiful brown girl i mean oh god i can't really really i mean i just can't believe that the you know, the solution to 2020's problem is to bring back segregation we like say i'm like uh, Okay, I don't uh, know. Actually, you know what? It's not okay. It's a uh, segregation is bad. Uh, we don't want to look at people as skin colors and identities. That's all bad. That's bad. And we shouldn't cancel people who don't want to do that because they're right. <laughs> you know, that's bad. Fine, that's uh, let's see, talking about time with children. And, and I'm pretty sure he thought he was going to get a different result that he got. Turns out there are a whole bunch more doctors we never knew about. <laughs> I mean, God, is he, he's even trying to have trouble getting the bloody words out. Oh, my God. That controversial episode has really divided opinion, to say the least. Uh, yeah, I'm going to disagree. I'm going to disagree. And based on the on the uh, yeah, on this, I'm disagreeing. That I don't think it's divided opinion. I think it's, uh, um, uh, what was it, coalesced opinion. It's, so, it's, it's solidified opinion that most people just don't like this era, Doctor. Okay, this is my personal take on where fandom is, right? I think we have about 30% who absolutely hate this era of Doctor Who, which I am in. I am I am unashamed in because I do. I absolutely hate this. I do not know why they take they chosen, you know, I, I the reasonably historic moment of, of, of uh, casting a, a woman to play the Doctor to say, you know, we're not just going to have a woman play the Doctor, but now we're going to make the Doctor into an idiot without authority. And now we're going to make them lots of, you know, and now you yeah, the doctor who was like 13 people, uh, which made him kind of special. Now, nah, now we're going to make him like infinite people. There's like, there's like limitless doctors. And I think that kind of just dilutes the specialness of the character. Oh, and by the way, you know the stakes you had when the doctor might die, you know, that all those like life and death things. Yeah, that's all gone because the doctor's now functionally immortal, right? Uh, okay, fine. So yeah. The, and I, I don't think they went down so oh yeah look at this guy he has this sweaty little face so he's asked about timeless children uh, what did the panel think about the way the whole history of the doctor history was rewritten in this big change of uh, mythology river why didn't you lead us off 
I did not like this because it turned the Gallifreyans into kidnappers and child abusers. And I don't think that's what Doctor Who is about. Uh, also, I mean, very good points, uh, River Alexandra song. Uh, very, very good points. I think Noel makes that point as well. Uh, not just child abusers, child murderers, you know, because Tech to Earn, who we never heard of before, but has that kind of like uh, blank, dead eyed expression that we see in all uh, uh, like Marvel. And I oh, saw it a lot in Watchmen as well, the HBO Watchmen series, because, you know, you can't. Uh, do anything if it's a, if it's a female character that might make them good or bad or have any you know have any interesting bits to them whatsoever. They all gonna be like that's that's kind of like oh like it's kind of like Tectoon's expression the whole time. You don't think uh, Doctor Who's the place for child abuse? Yes, possibly so. Good point. What did you reckon, John? Like like, do you think he knew any of these things were coming? Well, while I did <clears throat> like the idea of an older black female doctor among. Yeah, no, you know what? I mean, okay, I don't mind there being an older black female doctor. I do mind them being shoehorned in, in, you know, in places where they can't possibly fit. You know, I, I, the, when Matt Smith got the role, the person who I was convinced was going to get it, it was Patterson Joseph, who was uh, a great actor, would have been a fan, freaking fantastic doctor. Would have loved to have seen him. But I love Matt Smith as well, you know. So, uh, yeah, listen, I do, uh, I, again, I don't like judging things on identity or skin color. But, you know, I, I, yeah, I, that much I can hear. There's like, it's kind of weird there's never been a dark skinned doctor. Ah, you know, it's a, a, yeah, and I, I can understand it in the 60s and 70s. It's like, uh, television should reflect the makeup of the society that it's supposed to be entertaining, right? That's it. And, you know, the, the landscape just was there wasn't that many non white faces in the 60s or 70s. Yeah, and even to an extent the 80s. But now it's like, come on. You know, and I wouldn't like, like look to cast a black guy as a, as, as a doctor. But, uh, boy, this guy looks a bit shocked, doesn't he? <laughs> I don't close the back like, But, like, it's a bit weird. They haven't found one as yet, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I'd have to ask you. Yeah, if, 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 you're, if you're casting from the progressive stack, as, as Chris Chidmore clearly was, how are, you, like, how are you saying that white women, white blonde women, white blonde, you know, college-educated and successful women have a harder time than black people? Really? That, that, that's your state? No, no, <laughs> no, no, I, listen, I, uh, you know, slavery was what, uh, two, it, it, it was, there's still people whose grandparents remember slavery, you know, so I, I think, listen, if you're gonna play the game, which is a terrible game to play, you know, judge people on their merits as human beings, that's a much better thing to do, uh, uh it's just a terrible thing to judge them, but, yeah, but if you're gonna do that, at least be a bit bloody honest, come on. These new ones, I thought the whole contra contrivance was plot desperation and just, of course, messing with canon. Uh, take it away, Julie. I, I feel exactly that, that it was plot desperation, that, that they had written themselves into a corner and they didn't know where to go. And so they just came up with this outlandish story. I think the fallout that they're not expecting is, is the child abuse part, though. I, I don't think you thought of that. Yeah, I don't think I don't think they thought of yeah just a lot of stuff. I don't think they thought of a lot of stuff, uh, and I really think they thought it was going to be this beloved by fans. They thought they're going to fans are just going to love it because they don't understand Doctor Who. Clearly, they don't understand Doctor. Who. And uh, little little Sandro uh, Monetti is like, oh, oh no, I'm, I'm with a bunch of people who haven't drank the Kool Aid. Oh, will this will this reflect bad on me? Am I going to get cancelled? Oh no! Wow, uh, Karen. 
<laughs> yeah, look, I mean, like, wow, oh, uh, oh, uh, like, I mean, really? That, does that face not look like a guy who, who is about to soil himself? Uh, yes, I think it does. Um, I did not like it at all. <laughs> and look, that was his last hope. You know, she didn't like it at all. Karen, Elisa, my heart bleeds for you with with being a Karen in uh, in 2020. But still, you know, they didn't like it much. Oh, well, she didn't like it much. And she's got a Jodie Tardis. Um, basically, we waited 50 years, um, or a little over 50 years, to find out what the doctor, who the doctor is. And then all they came up with was a lost child and that was taken to Gallifrey. And, and, and told in, like, in voiceover. You know, in voiceover. It was a, such a lazy way of writing it. Oh, my gosh. It was experimented on and oh, yeah, yeah, the, Time Lords. Yeah, don't, don't forget uh, experimented on. You know, just let's throw in a little bit of Dr. Mengele into that. If we haven't made it as dark and... But again... Because it was done by a woman and take two, and they—I don't think anyone thought they, she could do anything bad because she's a stunning and brave woman of science. Um, where's their backstories? Where else did this child come from? It's now there's like hundreds of doctors. Yeah, you know, so they, like, it's not only yeah, like, uh, that that the the these these people of you know non-white people were entirely tokenized. By the BBC, by uh, by Chris Chibnall, which is just vile, Enti entirely tokenized. They were there to for Chris Chibnall to feel good about himself for being like yeah, being stunning and brave. Uh, and uh, it's very obvious that somebody's a token when they don't have any lines. The only th the only point they matter is uh, is their skin color and their gen, you know, their identity. It's it's really kind of disgusting. So like uh, Sa Sandro now is just uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> well. Well, I, I told you they were an opinionated panel. Um, you know, uh, Christy, are you going to be the, the lone voice who loved the timeless child? No, I just oh. like the round, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, look, there's a lot of this talk of let me drink your, your sweet fanboy tears, which, I, which I'm not really on board with that, that kind of uh, maliciousness. But, oh, Zondo, uh, what am I having a little bit of a taste of your, your sweet uh, corrupt journalist tears? So, so bad. It put so many holes into the Who verse canon from William Hartnell being the one where the chameleon circuit gets stuck in the blue box form to the birth of the Time Lords. And it would have made more sense, actually, if it was the master that was the timeless child than the doctor. Yeah, we've all said that. Hey, let's start it off with child abuse. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So I think. So yeah. You see, this is what happens. Okay. I, I, we're not going to watch the rest, but th this is what happens when uh, when you live in your own in your own bubble, as the people in Hollywood do. So I went to look at his Twitter feed, and he's all about being a British uh, uh, celebrity journalist uh, uh, living in uh, in LA. And I guess he's going to dine out this the next few weeks. Going, oh, I met with some other the unwashed masses. Oh, and they didn't like the stunning and brave. You see, this is why you are so completely, completely out of step with your. Uh, uh, no, this is why you're so completely, you know, irrelevant now, journalists. You know, it's because you're completely out of step with the audience. It used to be before social media, you could just tell us what, what you know, what to think, and you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't hear back from us much. We might go on points of view like Chris Chibnall did, you know. Or whatever it was uh but yeah now now you hear a voice and our voices are this sucks and these are people that should have been totally on board for it people who like their general opinion of jody is ah she's great i don't like the stories which i think they're being charitable fine you know what they like they, uh, they like a performance i really don't i really fundamentally don't um i just think it's a lazy performance it performance but anyway that is just my opinion for you, which is okay, which is why I, I guess why you come here. My name is Sheila Beckin, the rabbi from another planet. I hope you enjoyed this little chortle at uh, at the current production team's expense. Uh, they certainly brought us enough misery that I think they deserve it. Uh, my name is Sheila Beckin, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. <laughs>